Hi everyone. So the August 2020 update for Pixel Experience Plus recently came out. I have the update installed on my Poco F1 and in this video I am going to explain how to install this update and also cover what's new in it. I have a completely separate video in which I review the Pixel Experience Plus ROM. I will leave a link for it here and also in the descriptions. Do watch it if you haven't already. And I will also go through some of your questions about this ROM that you guys had asked in the previous video. Plus a little bonus content where I am going to discuss a dilemma that most people face who love to live on the bleeding edge of tech and want the latest and greatest updates whenever they are released. Don't forget to like this video if you found it informative and subscribe for more such videos. Now with all of this out of the way, let's begin. How to update? Some of you guys may be using a custom ROM for the very first time and might have several questions regarding updates. So let's go through the actual update process first. The common fear that new users have is, do I have to always download the update file from website and manually flash it every single time through TWRP? Well, in case of Pixel experience, the answer is no. This ROM receives over the air updates or OTAs just like your default operating system updates like MIUI, iOS etc. Whenever a new update is available, you receive a notification. Just tap on it. Twenty-two August update, size two sixty-seven MB. View details. You can also check for new update manually. Just open Settings app, scroll down, and select System. Tap on Advanced to expand it. Tap on System Update. Here you can tap on Check for Update. Once new update is available, tap Download to start downloading. Now, depending on your internet speed and the load on the ROM servers, this download time may vary. If the download gets stuck or you receive an error while downloading, tap the Hamburger button and tap Delete, and start the download again. Errors during download happened a lot with this ROM in the past. Thankfully, they have updated their servers and now it is less often. Once the download is complete, tap on Install, tap OK, and the update will begin installing. Once it is complete, the device will start again. You will get a notification saying that it is finishing the system update. It will continue this in the background. At this point, you can start using the phone. For me, this entire process that is downloading and installing took around seven minutes. You can say that's pretty fast. You can see we have the August Android security patch with this update. After this, you should also go to the Play Store and check for updates. This is because certain apps that are bundled with the ROM may get outdated in a few days that it takes for the ROM to reach you and you installing the ROM. By this time, newer versions are available on the Play Store. So what's new in this update? Visual changes. New extended volume panel. If you press the volume keys, the volume panel shows up. It now has this new expand button. Once you press it, it expands to show three different sliders. And here you can adjust the alarm volume, ring volume, and media volume. You can also quickly toggle between muting and unmuting these three types of volumes individually. Behind the scenes changes. Silver Core is now updated to version 6.2. There are updates to the kernel, fingerprint drivers, XFAT, and full LTO support. You can read them here. Bugs that I found keyboard lag and touch issues. Right after I installed the update, I found issues with the keyboard. While typing, some keys just refused to be pressed on the first try and had to be hit multiple times. At first, I thought maybe I was not hitting them right or maybe the screen was dirty or oily or something. But the issue kept resurfacing again and again. I checked online and a few others were facing the same issue. One guy's keyboard was behaving in such a way that it was completely unusable. This bug, however, went away after some time before I could shoot a video of it but it does come back randomly. Some people also had issues with the display refusing to wake up and other touch issues. I personally faced no such issues. Public service announcement, a quick guide on deciding for yourself if you should install the brand new update. Any new update usually contains three things. Brand new features, fixes for bugs from previous versions and optimizations, new bugs. However, only the first two points are mentioned in changelog because it's a normal human tendency. 
no one wants to highlight their flaws obviously and another reason being it's impossible to test everything and some bugs go undetected till the update is released to a wider audience it is therefore that i will strongly recommend to new users who are installing any custom rom or any other beta software on their phone to wait for some time after release of any new update especially if you're using it on your daily driver that is your main phone and don't have another spare phone around you should first check online if anyone has faced any issues how severe is the issue how common is the issue and here's the thing except major version updates like when we are updating from android 10 to 11 ios 13 to 14 etc other smaller updates don't have many new features there are hardly one to two or sometimes a handful of features if the developer couldn't release them in the first builds but they can have bugs and trust me some bugs can be very pesky in one of the builds of this rom itself video calling apps like zoom were using the ir camera you don't want to look like a ghost in business meetings this personally happened to me i'll leave a link for it luckily i had a spare mobile with me to use till a newer update came and fixed it Therefore, read blogs and watch reviews from people who have installed and actually used the update for some time. And that's why I take time to make these review videos. I make sure I personally install and use the update for at least a few days before giving out my opinions and findings. And once you find out if there are issues, ask yourself, are the brand new features in this update worth it for you to live with these issues till they get fixed in a future update? Or should you skip this update and wait for the next one? I hope everything that I just said will help you make any future decisions regarding updates. I personally do research and then analyze pros and cons before deciding if I should install an update on my work and primary devices. Now let's get into Q&A to answer some of your questions from last video. So the first question is from Ritik Sharma. Is this a safe ROM? Yes it is. This ROM is developed by a large team and has a large active user base who proactively participate in forums etc. Plus the code too is available to check on GitHub. However, never trust any ROM blindly. Search for their reputation online. Is their code available for others to check etc. And only then make a decision. He also has a question about image persistence. Yes, even I have faced this issue. Developer has addressed and fixed it in a previous update. So no need to worry anymore. Second question is from Salman. Can we use payment apps? Yes, this ROM passes safety net check and all the banking and payment apps work on it. Weibo says, does it have a call recorder? No, this ROM does not have a call recording feature. Does Find My Device work? Yep, working fine, but you have to install the app first. Edin asks, does Face Unlock with IR camera work? Yes, like I had mentioned in the video itself, Face Unlock with IR camera works fine. How to set Pikachu wallpaper? Make sure you are on Pixel Experience Plus ROM. Plus is important. There is also a non-plus version. You have to be on the plus version to use this feature. Press and hold anywhere on the home screen. Tap, styles and wallpapers, open coming live. Last one is the Pokemon wallpaper. You can double tap to change Pokemon. Now final tap, set wallpaper. Battery life. Honestly, I think you will get excellent battery life on this ROM. It gets me through the day easily and many users online too have been getting good results. But if you want things like screen on time, standby time and all that from me, then well, the thing is, I have a mixed bag of conditions right now that don't allow me to give a proper answer to this question. The reason being me stuck in one place due to coronavirus lockdown. On one hand, there are conditions that help with good battery life. Like I am 99% of the time connected to Wi-Fi. It gives good internet speeds, the device doesn't have to wait and struggle to get and load things. Plus, as I am at home, I sometimes consume content on TV, laptop and tablet, which divides the total usage and hence doesn't guarantee real life screen on time. Even the charging schedule is not regular, as a wall charger is always within reach when the battery becomes slow, versus following a regular all day schedule. On the other hand, as there is poor cell phone network coverage indoors, the phone keeps on hunting for network, consuming and depleting battery even if the screen is on or off. Not to mention the way I have aggressively used this device last year. It took a hit on battery health. Therefore, I will reserve the judgment on how this particular ROM affects battery life for me. But as you asked, I am sharing some stats. Just have them with a grain of salt, without judgment. Some more features worth noting. Media output target. 
whenever you have some media playing on your device you can go to the media player interface in the notification sheet and tap the music icon a selection sheet will appear where you can choose between media targets like here i can switch between the phone speakers and earpods battery profiles you can set per app battery profiles go to settings battery optimization profiles here you can kind of tell the os hey this is a dialer or browser a game or streaming application and the os will change its performance and policies for when the app is in foreground or in the background memory according to whatever you have selected so this wraps up today's video If you found it informative go give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already By the way Android 11 is nearing public release and I am going to cover it in an upcoming video plus there are many videos in the pipeline so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever they come out and if you are the impatient type do follow me on Instagram and Twitter where I cover tech news and insights Thanks for watching this video. See you guys in the next one.